Hey, my friends, it's so good to see you. My name is Salim Talili, and this is week 18 of my carnivore vlog, documenting how I'm using a carnivore diet along with gymnastics training to get into the best shape of my life in my mid 40s. If you're someone in your middle age who is looking to get into the best shape of their life and is struggling with meeting your time commitments, this vlog might have some value for you. Right now, I'm on pause with the carnivore diet because, well, I've got holiday parties and all that good stuff doing. But that doesn't mean that I can't find a way to share some thoughts with you and continue to develop my understanding of the carnivore diet and how it impacts my health. Gymnastics continues to go well. I'm working on something called the tuck slide and developing all of the core abdominal muscles that are needed to balance. <laughs> I can't tell you enough how exciting it is to be able to just use my body in lots of different ways like this. When Adam was learning to walk, I had badly sprained my ankle and was basically unable to walk for a little over a year without massive amounts of pain. So the ability to get on my hands and use my body is so incredibly gratifying. It really is like the feeling of reclaiming my body. But I also recognize that there's no way that I could have done any of these things when I was close to 400 pounds. Everything was just so inflamed and full. I was filled with so much pain and so always exhausted. So I think back, well, what could I have done? What could I have told obese Salim that could help him? All right, look, dude, I know you want to get back into the gym and you want to start lifting weights and stuff like that, but let once you get to about 350, then your joints will probably feel good enough to actually really try and get into the gym. And then the key there is figuring out what is sustainable. What kind of exercises can you do consistently that you'll enjoy? And most importantly, don't it hurt your joints because it's not that you're not strong. It's that your bottleneck is your joints. When your knees and ankles give out, then you're back in bed, unable to move, and then that just creates this vicious cycle that it, you don't want to get back into. The first exercise that I would recommend Salim to do is lots of walking, specifically walking at a steady state, meaning keeping my heart rate under 125 beats per minute. When you keep your heart rate under a certain threshold, you are in the aerobic zone. The aerobic zone is a sustainable zone where you can do the work almost indefinitely. You want to think about your health in terms of sort of four areas, just keeping it simple. You've got your aerobic capacity, which is your keeping your heart rate at a steady state. You've got your glycolytic capacity, which is getting your heart rate at an elevated state. Then you've got your joint and muscle capacity stretching. And then finally, you've got your actual muscle mass and muscle strength. Those are the four dimensions of physical health that you can work on with exercise. And for someone who's morbidly obese, you really want to focus on the first category. Trying to sprint when you're 400 pounds is a recipe for injury. And it's not something that you can do consistently. Even if I could go and sprint for a long time, well, I couldn't sprint for a long time, but even if I could go sprinting, the odds of getting injured and not doing it again for days was much higher than trying to focus on maximizing the aerobic capacity. You see, the trick to the exercise is constantly try and increase the length of time that you can work out. The longer you can work out, the better, obviously, to a reasonable extent. So walking would be the first and most important activity that you could do at that kind of level of obesity. Any kind of cardiovascular exercise that you could do that would keep your heart rate at a reasonable level without exacerbating joint issues is a great exercise for someone who's morbidly obese. So using the elliptical, using the bike, the stationary bike, uh, swimming. The second exercise that I would 
recommend Selim do is stretching because the bottleneck, as I said before, is your joints when you're at that level of weight. It was never or rarely ever that I, my muscles were too sore for me to work out. It was that my joints were hurting. So anything that could allow your uh, joints, your tendons, your muscles to stretch a little bit would help reduce that inflammation and allow you to continue to work out. On a... Yeah, just go back. And you can hold that for even 30 seconds and if you do that on each side, a couple sets of it. <laughs> I wouldn't even touch weights for a while. And frankly, just walking with that much weight on you is weightlifting. So I, in that sense, I had a lot of muscle mass on me because I was constantly carrying a heavy amount of weight. And the third exercise would be kettlebell swings. Kettlebell swings are something that are relatively joint friendly because your kettlebell is a simple maneuver that is focused on mastering the hip hinge, which is not a joint that typically is easily injured the way your knees and ankles are. And the kettlebell can both work your aerobic capacity and it can work your glycolytic capacity along with your muscle mass. So that swing, just focusing on getting the form right and then increasing the total number of swings that you can do in a given day is a phenomenal workout and really does focus on your core. So it is an incredibly useful exercise and it's one you know that you can do in the privacy of your own home so you don't feel embarrassed or awkward about doing workouts around other people. I'd also do planks if I were trying to lose all of this weight again. Now, that's not going to necessarily be a weight reducer, but having a strong core is such a pivotal part of your ability to do so many other exercises and maintain overall uh, stability. It's simple doing those three exercises and then you can find variations you know farmers walk or weighted walking something like that uh, going from planks to push-ups but the first three exercises fundamentally you can go really far with those three I am gonna continue to talk about this stuff on my blog salim.digital where I write out all of my thoughts I'd love to hear from you and tell me what kind of exercises you've been doing that have helped you uh, to lose weight and to get stronger on your journey. As always, I will talk to you next week. <laughs> Take care.